Welcome back to Mathematics Lifeline. In today's video, I'd like to explain to you why the plus C is so important when we're integrating functions. Now, when you're first learning about integrals, you, you've probably heard you always need to add the plus C. And some professors will get into this and explain to you why it's so important. Some won't, and, and that's okay because it, it's just standard practice, really. It's, it's kind of a formality. But if you don't think about it, you can have some integrals that get a little bit trickier that will end up giving you two different answers. And if you see that, you're going to be confused because you don't know what the plus C is actually there for and why it makes two different answers actually the same. Now let's look at the integral of 2x dx. Now this is not one of those hard integrals that I'm talking about. This is pretty standard practice. But if we have the integral of 2x, what we do is the power rule. So we do 2x squared over 2, and then the 2s will cancel. And again, we need the plus C. The 2s will cancel, so we end up with x squared plus C. So that plus C is just an arbitrary constant. So if we were going to graph this function, here's x squared where C is 0, right? Now if we were to shift it up a unit, it would look something like this. And shift it up 3 units, it would look like this, right? You can shift this function as much as you want. And the reason this doesn't affect the answer is because if we were to take the derivative of this, no matter what constant we choose, we're going to get back to 2x, right? Because if we look at the derivative of x squared plus 5 versus the derivative of x squared minus 8, right? If we're taking the derivative of these, this one is going to give us 2x for the x squared, but the 5 is a constant, so the derivative is 0. doesn't matter. So we got back to the 2x. And with x squared minus 8, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to go to 2x, and since this minus 8 is just a number, the derivative is going to be 0. So both of these get you back to the original function that we wanted, and it didn't matter what constant we chose. And this is true for any number you plug in. It doesn't have to even be integers. Now, there are some integrals, however, that make this process a little bit more complicated, and you'll see why this plus c actually affects everything. So here's an example that I actually got on one of my exams. If we look at the integral of 1 over 2x dx. Now, when you're looking at this, it de depends on what's, it really depends on what you more recently learned is how you would approach this, because a lot of students will do it different ways. The one way you can do it is you can break up the integral. This is the same as the integral of 1 half times 1 over x dx, which of course we can pull the 1 half out, 1 half times the integral of 1 over x dx. That's perfectly allowed. And now the 1 half goes along for the ride, and the integral of 1 over x is the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. So this, again, this is the standard practice. You add the plus c. You don't even, you don't even think twice about it. However, there's another way to solve this integral to where this function right here will look a little bit different. So if we take the integral of 1 over 2x dx, and instead of breaking it up, what if we tried a u substitution? So we'll say u is equal to 2x, which means that du is 2 dx. So now if we want to replace this dx with something in terms of u, we need to divide this 2 over. So we'll have du over 2 is equal to dx. So with that, we're going to come up here, and we're going to rewrite this integral in terms of u. So obviously the integral sign stays the same. 1 over, now the 2x became our u here. So that's going to be u, and we're multiplying by du over 2, because that's what replaced this dx. You see these are replaceable. So again, kind of like the last one, we're going to pull out the 1 half from this 2 in the denominator, times the integral of 1 over u du. Now these look similar, however, we're not in terms of x anymore. We're in terms of u now. So when we integrate this, we're going to get 1 half the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, but this u was 2x. So that's going to be 1 half the natural log of the absolute value of 2x plus c. Well, that's strange, right? Because we have and here, the input of the natural log is just an x, and over here, it's a 2x. So why is that the case? Well, this is why the plus c is so important, because this is what we're going to try to make this one look like. So if we take 1 half natural log of 
2x, right? We have plus c. Now c is arbitrary, so we can change it, right? It doesn't matter what c is. It's an arbitrary number because when we take the derivative of that c, it's going to give us 0. So it doesn't matter what, if we change the c. So what we're going to do is we're going to split up this natural log because the natural log of a product of two things can always be split up as the natural log of the addition of those two things. So this is actually the same as 1 half ln of 2 plus 1 half ln of x plus c. Now, let's look at this term right here. 1 half ln of 2. Well, ln of 2 is just a number. And when you multiply it by 1 half, it stays just a number. It's just a constant. So what we're going to do is bunch this in with this c right here. So when we do that, we're going to have c plus 1 half ln of 2. Let's just call that constant d. So what we'll have after that is 1 half ln of the absolute value of x plus the new constant d. And now you can see that this matches with this with the exception of c and d, but d is just an arbitrary constant just like c. So these answers are actually the exact same thing, which this is really, it's not, it wouldn't be possible to do this without that fact or without that plus c because you wouldn't be able to combine these terms. You would have this extra factor of one half ln two, but with the plus c, it makes these two or antiderivatives the exact same answer. So when you see this, you probably would be confused if you didn't put the plus c because there's no way to make it work. But in this case, they are the same answer, which is super cool. And that's why we need this plus c because it's able to transform these functions. And we're not going to be worried about getting ln of x or ln of 2x because we have the constant that can affect it. Now, let's do one more example of an integral like this. Now, I actually made a YouTube short on this integral. And I said that if you didn't know how to do it, come watch my newest video and you'll be able to see exactly why those two answers were the same. So it's going to be something similar, but in this case, we're going to have the integral of secant squared x tangent x dx. Now, when you look at this, there's a couple ways we can think about it. So we, no matter what method we want to use to solve this, we're going to need a u substitution. So in this case, for the first time, we'll say u equal to tangent x, which means that du is equal to secant squared x dx. Now we can rewrite this integral in terms of u. So this now becomes the integral. Well, tangent x became our u, and secant squared x dx became our du. So this is just the integral of u du, which when we take the integral of that, we're going to get u squared over 2 plus c, which in this case is going to be tangent squared x over 2 plus c. Okay, so that's a perfectly valid answer, right? This works. This is, this is a correct answer. Now, the problem is there is another way to do this. So instead of writing secant squared x tangent x, let's break it up. So we can say this is the same thing as secant x, secant x, tangent x, dx, right? Because this right here is just secant squared, which is the same thing, and tangent x dx stays the same. But this time, instead of letting u equal tangent x, let's let u equal secant x, which means that du is the derivative of secant x, which is actually secant x tangent x dx. So this is interesting because now when we rewrite this in terms of u, our u was secant x. So let's say this is u. So that means this is u. And then the secant x tangent x right here, actually with the dx, it includes that too, is all du. So again, we have the integral of u du. Okay, well, this is a pretty easy integral to take. It's just going to be u squared over 2 plus c, which in this case, u was secant x. So this is going to be secant squared x over 2 plus c. Now, this one is even more extreme because when you look at these two functions, you have a tangent squared over 2 and a secant squared over 2. 
Now, if c was not arbitrary, this would imply that tangent squared is equal to secant squared, but that is not true because tangent squared is sine over cosine squared, and this one is one over cosine all squared. So they're not the same function. But how can we make them the same using this plus c? Well, here's how we're gonna do it. If we remember the trig identity, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. Remember, there's three identities that go along with this. They're called the Pythagorean identities. Now, there are three that go with it, and you may remember them, or you may know how to construct them. Either way is fine, but we're gonna construct the one that deals with tangent squared and secant squared. So the way we're gonna do that is we're going to divide all of these terms by cosine squared. So when we do that, we get a sine squared over cosine squared, which is a tangent squared x, then we have plus cosine squared over cosine squared, which of course is just gonna be one, and that equals one over secant squared. Well, one over secant squared is, I'm sorry, one over cosine squared is secant squared x. So we're still dividing by cosine, I accidentally said secant, but we're still dividing by cosine, and one over cosine is secant, one over cosine squared is secant squared. So we have this identity. And we're going to use that to help us out with this problem. So what we're going to do is let's rewrite this one. Instead of secant squared x, we're going to replace it with tangent squared x plus 1. So this one is actually the same thing as tangent squared x plus 1 over 2 plus c. And now maybe you can see where we're going here because we can split this fraction up. So what we have is tangent squared x over 2 plus 1 half plus c, right? And now this is in terms of that tangent squared over 2, but we have 1 half plus c right here. So let's call that new constant d, which would mean that this is equal to tangent squared x over 2 plus an arbitrary constant d. And now since c and d are arbitrary, these are the exact same answer. So I remember when I first saw this integral and I was like, how are we getting two separate answers here? But because of that arbitrary constant, these are the same, but they're not the same without the plus C, which is why it's so, so important. It's why it's so stressed that we put these plus C's because it makes these true antiderivatives. Without the plus C, these are not equal. They're not, there's no way to make them equal. So we need to really make sure that when we're doing integrals, we add the plus C, and that's for this reason. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. Um, I really enjoy this question. I think it's, it's very nice to see how it all comes together because the plus C just seems like a, a procedural thing, but when you actually know why you need it, and for questions like this, I think it makes it that much more interesting. So of course, let me know if you have any questions, but thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.